Hey, what's going on, everyone? Before we get into our conversation, I want to let you know this podcast is sponsored by BetRivers.com. BetRivers.com, the best place for all your sports gambling needs. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can also watch all of these episodes on the Field of 68 YouTube channel. Now, let's get into our conversation. What's going on, everyone? This is Eric Devendorf, your host of the Scores Table Podcast. And today we have on a special guest. This guest actually came on before. Uh, he just actually finished up his senior season at Syracuse. He had an unbelievable senior season. First team all ACC, uh, leading scorer in the ACC as well. I'd like to welcome my guy back, Buddy Bayheim. Appreciate you, bud. You already know it is. Thanks, bro. Absolutely. So let's get right into it, man. I want to talk about your last four years at Syracuse, you know, the evolution in your game from year to year, the ups and downs, playing with your dad, or excuse me, playing for your dad, playing with your brother, and, and all the pressures that come with it. And then obviously all the successes and achievements that um, you were able to accomplish throughout your, throughout your career. So kind of just, you know, go over those those four years and how that was for you, bro. Yeah, man, just a lot of a lot of ups and downs. It's how I describe it by a lot of great moments, but just a lot of great people always there for me. I think that's one of the biggest things for why I got to where I'm at. I always will give credit to the people that have been there for me and obviously owe them that. But freshman year, man, started off slow. I remember I started my first two games and, uh, you know, Frank was injured, Jalen was injured. So I kind of had to start and I struggled. I think I was one for 12 the first game, one for seven the next game. And, you know, I, I knew I had a ways to go. And just the pace of the game, I think, was tough. Just as a different level, I realized, like, all right, college ball is definitely not is not the same as high school. It's a, definitely a big level physical physicality-wise, skill-wise, everything. So, you know, that was a bumpy start. But just being able to persevere through that end of my season, shot 40% in league play, uh, was proud of how I ended up, made it to the tournament. Obviously, lost the first game, but uh, I, I thought I could build off that and, and you know exceed my expectations overall. Though for what I was going to do that year as a freshman, I thought I'd be a backup player, just learn from Tyus that year and grow in practice, challenge those guys, just help the team in any way possible. So having that experience really helped me a lot to have a jump my sophomore year average about 15 a game and just grew. Played with Elijah, uh, one of my favorite teammates to this day, Marek. Uh, Joe, first year with Joe on the backcourt and uh, grew a lot. Um, you know, obviously COVID hit at the end of the season. We were played our best game, our last game against UNC, but it was still a, a lot to build off that, good positives to, to build off that. And uh, going to COVID, working out with you every day and Jimmy helped a lot going into my junior year. Um, obviously, there were ups and downs there. Started off a little slower, uh, had, a, had a tough stretch with Virginia and Pittsburgh lost by double digits on the road. Clemson, uh, we got beat a couple of times, you know, pretty bad uh, that season. And then obviously we went on a, a tear at the end of the year, started playing our best basketball, definitely the best basketball I've probably played in my my career, just shooting the ball extremely well, playing with guys. Just the chemistry was there, was clicking, playing with a guy like Marek. He made it easy for me and, you know, just kept, kept working, kept shooting. I always feel like I – played my best basketball at the end of the year because I just continue to work throughout the year, no matter what. If we have a busy game schedule, I'm going to get my extra work in. So that, you know, that stretch there was is obviously a, the biggest highlight looking back on my career, just going to Sweet 16, playing really well, playing, having fun, playing free, especially after a year of COVID and no fans. It was a tough year, but to be able to persevere and, and win at the end when it matters mattered most was was awesome. And then this last year, obviously, didn't go how we wanted to. We we felt like, you know, I, I still feel like this is one of the best teams I played on. I mean, my freshman year was really talented with O'Shea, Tyus, Frank, Pascal, and Elijah. But I think we had the pieces still. And, you know, we could we could have had 20 ones easily. We we just lost, you know, some some heartbreakers, games that we didn't take care of the ball. We gave up. We let guys make shots. You know, it didn't go how we wanted to, but this team worked as hard as any team I've been a part of. We persevered. We stuck together, and, you know, there's still a lot to take away from it because we didn't give up, and that's all that matters. At the end of the day, you're going to learn from this, and uh, it's going to motivate me to, to be a better player and continue to work hard. But with my brother this year, has, was uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, 
we grew up together going to SU games, uh, dreaming these moments. So I can't say enough about how much that meant to me, how much it meant to him and sharing the court with him, having my dad on the sides, on sidelines, my mom in the stands, my sister had, a, had some games. Uh, it, it was pretty crazy. I mean, I, I never would have dreamed of that 10 years ago. So I think it was still a special year for all of us and obviously didn't go how we wanted it to, but you got to look at the positives and uh, just with everything that's happened and COVID and everything going on in the world, it, it was still a pretty incredible experience, but uh, I can't, can't begin to uh, say how much I've grown as a person off the court, as a player on the court, just, you know, oh, so many, so many people credit for that. You, GMAC, Ryan Cabellas, the three top guys that come to my mind, obviously my dad, um, Coach Red, Coach Griff, but uh, you know, you guys really helped me get here, and I wouldn't wouldn't be here without you guys. But pretty pretty incredible to see, you know, how far I've come over these last four years. Yeah, and you still got a long way to go. You know, it's it's just it's the beginning of a new chapter now. Yeah. So when did that? I guess that light really switch on for you, bro? Because you know, early on, you know, people doubted you a lot. You know, they were they were saying you're just you know, here because your last name, because your dad and, and you yeah. proved everybody wrong. But when was really that moment, you know, could have been practice uh, game mm -hmm. where it was really like, all right, man, I belong here. And, and you really started to, you know, believe in yourself and have that confidence in your game. I think it was really little moments. Um, uh, you know, I remember after New York City, we went and, and UConn beat us, Oregon beat us pretty good. And I got on the court for a couple minutes during those games, but I, you know, I was like shocked. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm not ready for this. Like this pace, this, you know, these guys are a lot more stronger than me, quicker than me, just better players. I don't, you know, I'm going to take a little, but it was little moments around along that non-conference stretch. I played against Northeastern, had 11 points, St. Bonaventure, 11, 12 points. And uh, just little moments where I was doing well, you know, having, veteran guys like Frank telling me, you know, you're doing good, you're, you know, your shot's going to fall, but everything else, you're working hard, your defense rotations are doing, you're good in the zone and you're going to make shots eventually just keep working. So when, you know, those guys were telling me and just keep working, believing in me, you know, that helped a lot. And then just league play really helped just having, I think I had 14 against Louisville at our place. They were ranked um, just a couple moments here and there. I'd come in, you know, BC, I had a big game here and on the road against them. Pitt, obviously not the top level teams yet, but I was getting in and contributing. Virginia, I'd, you know, eight early in the first half and just, just little moments like that where I was like, all right, you know, I'm starting to get better, seeing improvement and just continue to work. I think no matter what I just said, I'm going to going to make it work no matter what, because I'm at Syracuse. This is, this is what I worked for my whole life. So I'm going to make it work some way or another. Absolutely. It, how hard is it as a score, especially early on in your career, you know, when you're not shooting the ball well to, to really stay engaged, you talk about Frank, you know, telling you, Hey, you, your rotations on defense are looking good. You're playing hard, but how, how hard is that when, you know, you're not shooting the ball well to stay engaged and, and be able to bring, you know, value in other parts of the game. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. That's definitely the biggest thing I learned, just having GMAC, you know, remind me every day, you know, there's so much more ways you can contribute. Uh, I mean, this year, obviously, it was different. I just drew so much attention. I could just make plays for guys, and my playmaking got better. But my freshman year, especially, just learning, like, all right, you got to still be engaged because my mindset at first there is, like, all right, if I'm not making shots, I'm, I'm hurting us on the court. Uh, you know, I shouldn't be out here. But I needed to realize, like, hey, I'm, I'm drawing space for guys, like, top to attack and I'm um, you know guys aren't going to leave me and double guys but if they do you know try to make knock it down obviously but just having that respect out there being a shooter you got to uh, still have that confidence always and just uh, know that when you get it you, you, it's got to have that main same mindset is going to go in so just being confident out there staying confident was the biggest thing and just realizing I belong out there and uh, you know I can I can still impact the game in other ways. What's one thing <clears throat> your dad said to you either before, during, or after the game that really, um, you know, will stick with you throughout, you know, your career, you know, professional and beyond? Yeah, honestly, man, uh, nothing like basketball, you obviously a lot of stuff, but just after every game, it didn't matter if I had 10 points, if I had 30 points, he would text me and just say, good game, I love you. And he'd say that no matter what, you know, stay with it. I love you after every time. And that will always stick with me. That's, you know, that's always what got me to wake up the next day and go even harder and, you know, try to improve if I had a rough night shooting or whatever it was, get a bad loss. He, he was always there believing in me. He, 
he believed in me since, you know, sixth, seventh grade. Uh, that's what sticks out with me the most. You know, I'd be crying after a game or something because I felt like I wasn't living up to the name or I wasn't a good player yet. You know, you saw it. I wasn't there yet. I wasn't athletic, nothing real. I was just skinny and could kind of shoot it. But he just told me you're going to be one of the best players in the area one day. And that's all I needed to hear. I just would get up at six and put work in. And it's really all that 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 stuff that he he told me. And, you know, I look up to him more than anyone. So he didn't have to tell me anything crazy. He just told me, to tell me to keep shooting. And, you know, he just told me he's proud of me no matter what happened. So that right there meant everything and all I needed to hear. Let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet Rivers Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up with Bet Rivers yet, now's the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their new Rush Pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, more secure, and more reliable. With basketball season right around the corner, there's never been a better time to get in on the action by going to betrivers.com. Today or downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call telephone number 1-800-GAMBLER. How, how tough do you think it was on him, though, you know, <laughs> having to balance, you know, coaching both of his sons? You know, you want you, it's, it's normal. You want your sons to do great. That's just being a good dad. That's what it is. But, you know, having to balance, you know, wanting to win games. How hard was that on him? And, and did you see it sometimes during the year? Like, did he like, damn, it's a you know, it's a lot. I know he's not showing it, but it's it's a lot, man. Yeah, no, he he did a good job not showing it for the most part. But there are definitely times, I think, where, you know, I'm if I'm struggling to shoot it a little more than usual, he's going to he's going to get on us a little more than than normal. But uh, I think he did a great job balancing it. I think the previous three years having me helped a lot. Um, You know, I said he benched me a couple games freshman year. I didn't play at all. And, you know, I, I told him I understand. I don't I really don't care if I play or not, you know, I, I just wanted whatever happens to help the team. If I you need me out there, I'll be out there. But I, I think he knew that I didn't care no matter what. I understood what he was thinking. But uh, I think there were moments where he was, you know, if I was struggling or something, he was like, damn, like, come on. Like, you know, he's a little you, <laughs> for his kid. You can't. It's still going to be an emotional part for him is, you know, he can't really look at us as normal players because we're not at the end of the day. Right. Exactly. Who, who was the guy? in your whole career, the opposing guy that guarded you the hardest or was the toughest to play against? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. There are a lot of tough defenders, especially these last couple of years. Uh, obviously, going last year tournament, Jero on Houston was tough. Just, you know, the toughest thing for me is, you know, I, I'd rather play a 6'2", a little quick guard, strong guy than a 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, long athlete that just moves really well because I can't shoot over them. It's it's tough. So he was 6'6", six, six, probably one of the quickest guys I've gone against and just, you know, was was really tough. So he's up there. Leaky Black's up there, obviously, 6'8", just an athlete. Um, he's really tough to go against. And uh those two right up there, at least Tony from Pittsburgh last year, he's at Arkansas now. Uh, he's up there. It's probably my top top three. But, you know, those six, 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 seven guys that are just athletes and move really well have always, you know, they gave me problems. So I'd say those guys, you know, any day. So what, what would your approach be then? How is your approach different? So when you are going against a guy six two, a little bit smaller um, compared to a guy who's, you know, six, 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 seven, long athletic, like what is what is your approach? Yeah, uh, just – you know, if it's a smaller guy, I know they're going to try to reach. Um, trying to think of this year who we really play that was undersized. Uh, I mean, NC State, uh, thinking about those guys, they usually have six one, six two, quick guards. So just trying to get it off a curl, get it in the lane. Um, that's the biggest thing for me is get it inside the three-point line where I can just rise up or get to my spot. So, uh, you know, Be Reese Beekman on Virginia sticks out, one of the best defenders in the league. So yeah. just – you know, get in, cur get in curls, uh, trying to catch you at the elbow a couple of times, just get one dribble pull up. But you can't play with it against those guys. You can't cross over. You can't go behind the back because they're going to mo more than likely try to rip you. And, you know, for against those guys, you want to get to your spot, get to your turnaround game, something I've worked on 
uh, so much these last two years. So just getting to my spots is the biggest thing. And then, you know, against size, just trying to trying to get them tired, trying to run them around a little and uh, catch them off a screen or something and use my pump fakes, whatever, but try to get, obviously have to get more separation against those guys. The one thing I did notice, I mean, you know, the evolution in your game, knowing how to, you know, play against different defenders. And I, and I said it earlier this year uh, on one of the uh, shows, because you're not the quickest guy, right? You're not the fastest guy. You're not the most athletic, but you you figured out how to score the basketball. You know what I mean? Like rather, and, and I saw you just learning how to use your body a lot. You know, if you're playing against those smaller guys, you already, you get into your spot and then you up and over, right? So those mm -hmm. bigger, longer athletic guys, you could get to your spot. Now you using your body, giving them that bump and keeping your angle. Now you just need that little bit to go ahead and, and, and rise up. So I think that was a big part of your evolution too. Just figuring out, ways to like because i'm not going to be able to blow by every single time so when i get to my spot how can i you know create space to be able to get it up and over and you you made a lot of hard shots this year and, and just throughout your whole career bro that i mean that was for me that was really stuck out you learning how to use your body and then with that comes the balance and the control footwork all that that was that was something that was huge yeah yeah definitely uh like you said just learning out different ways I can get to my spots. So I think, you know, just being 6'6 as a two guard, you're going to get those opportunities and uh, working tirelessly on, on getting to those spots and working on my mid range. You know, as much as I work on three point shoot, I think we've worked on me and you, me and GMAC have worked on getting to my mid range and back down game, turnaround game more than anything, probably just getting to my spots and being able to handle it. So, you know, you guys a lot of credit for that, but definitely something that I, I focused on these last three years. What, what's the hardest place that you went in and had to play at in your career? Duke's up there. I mean, Duke is just so different. It's it's so small, so it's so loud. It gets extremely loud. They have all their chants they do and stuff. That's a tough place. Um, Carolina's tough, obviously. Virginia's tough. Uh, all the tough, you know, top places are tough. Um, they're all good on the road, but uh, can't really think of a non-conference. I don't think we had any too many tough non-conference when I was here. But I'd say probably Duke's the toughest, just how loud it gets in there. And those players, they feed off that, obviously. It's a it's as tough of a place in any sport. Yeah, I, I, when it was, it used to be Pittsburgh when I was there. But I yeah. know they're, they're terrible now, so they're not. <laughs> yeah. They're not now, they're not, but they had the zoo. They had the Pittsburgh Zoo when we, you know, when we went in there, bro. They were, oh, they were oh, tireless. Yeah. I'm talking about it was on. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the what's the craziest thing an opposing fan has said to you? <laughs> man, that, I don't know. They've said a lot, man. I try to tune it out as much as I can. Yeah, you hear it though. You, I, mean, oh, I, I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> Daddy's boy. Uh, all this stuff, you know. Um, at, at Pitts, talking about Pittsburgh, though, I'll never forget. I my sophomore year, I sprained my ankle on Xavier Johnson. I was down for a minute or two, and I was getting up like, uh, you know, like when I was down, I heard them. They were all the student section was cheering, like they were happy, like cheering that I was injured on the ground. And I was like, all right, this is this is what we're doing. Like they were, I was on the bench and they were hollering at me, like you're soft, you're soft as shit, buddy, all this stuff. And I was like, dang, okay. <laughs> So that, that's up there for just like just disrespectful. But, uh, you know, daddy's boy, obviously all that stuff with my dad. So, uh, you know, I got used to that and kind of just found it funny. But there was definitely every game there was, you know, even when I wasn't playing freshman year, they were they were yelling at me on the bench. You know, Ohio State sticks out to me because their students were right on us, literally probably a foot behind me. So the whole game they were yelling at me. I didn't even play that game, but they were just, you know, yelling, <laughs> yelling stuff at me. <laughs> Uh, bro, I, I remember one time, you know, because I, I had gotten trouble off the court. Um, and when I came back, I remember we played at Pittsburgh and your dad, we because it was only me out there. It was only me going to go. I was going to go out there by myself. I always go by myself. Yeah. First. And I remember your dad was like, you sh do you sure you want to go out there yet? <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking about, bro, when I go out there, they holler at the whole, like, just what happened. Like, that's the whole crowd. And it's just me yeah. you know, and, and, and the manager. But I, I remember that moment. Like, they could, yeah, it can, it can, they don't care. It's they don't care. They don't, bro. Talk Georgetown, about Georgetown. Yeah. Those places do not care, man, at all. At all. I learned that early. Did you look, my freshman year with GMAC, 
uh, uh, we're at Pittsburgh. They're calling out his mom's name, sister. Yeah. How's yeah. uh, like I forget Notre the Dame oh. too. Yep, Notre Dame. Yeah. Like, how's Rebecca doing? Like you know, just like they got all type of. Yeah, it's but it, it's a part of it, especially, and you're not gonna get that, bro, if you're not one of the one of the great players or one of the yeah. guys on the team. They're gonna you know shout and holler, but if you if they giving it to you, you doing something. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. That you know, I just I like to thrive out there. And once I got going, I made sure to let them know, you know, I stop it. <laughs> and a couple of times, bro, I just seen a couple of times where you just you, you had some words like that's it, it come out of you. That's that competitive yeah. spirit. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I just you know putting in so much work, especially you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and when I get going, I'm gonna I'm gonna let them know for sure. You know, just you know having guys with that I've grew up with. You obviously an elite competitor, Jimmy a competitor just going against guys every day that that love to compete you know that's that's what I am at the end of the day off the court I'm going to be nice humble all that stuff but on the court I'm going to try to destroy whoever is going going against me yeah that's the mindset that's the mindset you got to have I, so I think you talked about it a little bit earlier um uh, but if you could pick one moment in your career that it would be your favorite moment what would it be Man, got to go, got to go Sweet 16 last year after being West Virginia. Um, that was just a surreal moment. I mean, that was probably probably the hardest year of my life ever, just going through COVID. It was the hardest year for a lot of people, but that season was tough. I had COVID on Christmas. Uh, I was in my guest room just chilling, couldn't do anything, uh, couldn't see the family for a while. Yeah. I was away from basketball for, for 10 days, and then we had to go play right after that, and just a weird year for for everyone but uh to be able to push through and just persevere fear through all that we were 11 seed not like we were supposed to win a game in the tournament anyways and we beat two really good teams uh you know I played obviously my best basketball you know at the best time of the year biggest time of the year and uh just a lot of work that that I put into that so just kind of it was just a lot it was more than just winning two games in the tournament it was a lot of emotion a lot of events um doing with my dad uh you know it was it was pretty awesome so that, that's definitely you know top moment and then obviously playing with Jimmy's right up there too so your favorite your favorite moment and what is your toughest moment or your <laughs> your least favorite moment man a lot of tough moments a lot of tough moments uh as a player just playing wise performance wise I would have to I mean this is tough uh, I'd probably say freshman year playing playing in my first tournament game against Baylor. I went 0 for 6. I, you know, I got thrust in the starting lineup. I, I, I don't think I was quite ready for that. I mean, I started the previous two games, had 20 against Pitt in the ACC and then 15 against Duke. But uh, I just I don't think I was quite ready for that moment and that, you know, I kind of felt like I let everyone down. I, I didn't play good. Uh, you know, we were in that game the whole game. If I, you know, felt like if I made a couple more shots, we would have won that game. And uh, that was a tough, you know, you know, it was a tough couple of weeks just after that because there's no more games, no more opportunities to go back out there and prove yourself. So, I mean, it was a good moment for me, though. It motivated me definitely. But that was that was obviously up there for, for uh, just a tough game and just, you know, a tough one of the tough moments. So you, you you touched a little bit on uh, on this year, uh, a lot of ups and downs. Obviously, didn't end how everybody wanted it to end. But you personally, you accomplished a lot, bro. You know I mean, personally, I know you're a team guy. I know you're not about you know self, but you personally, you accomplished a lot. First team All ACC, uh, you know, going into top fourteen all time scorer in Syracuse history. Uh, so what did you? I mean, what did you learn from this year? You know, just just going through all that, having all those ups and downs. What is your biggest takeaway? Yeah, uh, a lot of things. Just you know, I mean, no matter what, I feel like I'm just gonna work through everything. I think there were so many ups and downs this year. A lot of tough losses, tough games, heartbreaking games. Um, but I feel like you know, just I persevered through every moment. I try to stay, be a leader through it all. Have that same mindset every day. Still be a great, great teammate. That I, the best teammate I could in practice. And uh, I mean, it you know it was tiring. It was you know it was tough. There were games you know that we could have easily won. We didn't. And you know I felt like I was you know I was putting a lot into. I was playing forty minutes a night. Obviously uh, a lot of usage. Uh, facing the toughest guy in the league, toughest defender on each team. A lot of attention and. 
it, it was tiring, definitely. You know, there's stretch. We played five games in 10 days. And uh, it, I think, we, you know, we lost two or three heartbreakers in that stretch. And it, it was just, you know, realizing we weren't going to probably make the tournament. Uh, that was devastating on top of it. So there were a lot of emotions this year. It was a lot of ups and downs. Um, but I think just staying solid through it all, uh, working through it all was, you know, the biggest takeaway is I still still remain me. And, uh, you know, obviously the coaches, GMAC, when it, he, he, you know, always was there to pick me up and tell me just to keep going. So I obviously owe him, my dad, you know, my teammates credit for that. But just showing that, you know, I can I can play with anyone in the country. I feel like I can score on just about anyone in the country. It doesn't matter who you put on me. I just feel like I had that that confidence grew so much this year and um, obviously didn't go the way we wanted to. But I feel like I, I gave it everything I had every day. And that's why at the end of the day, I'll be at ease, at peace with this season. And, you know, I, ha I have no regrets. I truly gave it everything I had every day, uh, doing extra workouts, staying after practice, going to, going hard in practice, pre-practice workouts. I gave it everything I had. So at the end of the day, you know, that that's enough for me. Obviously, you want to win more games. But when you give it everything you have, you learn a lot. And it makes you a stronger person going forward. You can face those ups and downs and, and stay the same. And if not, work harder. Well said, bro. 100%. That's you're absolutely right. So, so I'm going to rattle off some numbers for you. And I know they're familiar to you. So 1,765 points. 309 made threes, that's second to G, the G Mac, 623 made field goals, 83% from the free throw line, 264 assists, 133 steals. And obviously, you know, first team all ACC leading this league in scoring. I mean, that, all those are pretty impressive numbers, bro. Like I said before, I know you're a team first guy. But I mean, passing all these legends in the scoring column in, in the all time, you know, three point shooting. Do you ever take the time just to, you know, sit back and, and, and be proud of yourself for all that you've done and, and accomplished at your, your career at Syracuse? Yeah, definitely. I think it, you know, it took a little bit. Uh, there were moments here and there. Obviously, I was, you know, very proud. But obviously, this season, I was just so consumed on trying to win games and get over that hump and you know after how the season ended and unfolded I was you know a little you know I was thinking about that a lot but uh just these last couple of days and having time to reflect you know watching old games and stuff uh it, it's been pretty incredible I really you know can't can't describe you know I I mean I never would have imagined this me and my dad actually we talked about it two days I went in to meet with him for about an hour and a half and we just we talked about everything and just kind of laughed about it for a little like like, you know, four years ago, you know, we're talking about the future now, we're trying to play in the NBA now. And four years ago, we were like, yeah, we'll see you, you know, you'll be a role player and then, you know, get a job after that or something, get, you know, try to get into sport, basketball or something, yeah. be, you know, be a trainer or whatever. But uh, we just, we had a good laugh because, you know, it, it's been, it's been quite a ride and, Oh man, I just owe so many people credit for where I'm at. Uh, you obviously, my dad, um, but it's, you know, a pretty something to be proud of for sure. I'm, I'm pretty proud of just everything I had to, a lot of adversity I had to face, man. Not many people get to see, you know, there's so much, there was a lot of pressure. You, you know, being the son of a Hall of Famer, uh, Syracuse, one of the best programs in college basketball. Uh, every game, you know, if we lose, it's, you know, it's on me. Uh, the coach is on with this and that. And yeah. I don't think, you know, many people would have got this far in my shoes as a player. I think, you know, people would have said, all right, I can't, you know, this is too much. I mean, it, it's, it's not easy. Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. Uh, you want to win so bad because uh, you're, this is, you know, all the Syracuse basketball is my life. So I wanted to win more than anything, but uh, I, I gave everything I had, like I said, and, you know, it was a pretty, pretty successful career looking back on it. Just, you know, come in, we were, I was ranked 349th in the country. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, wasn't wasn't playing on my AAU team till junior year. I was a bench player the year before. I played five minutes a game, probably averaged ten points a game in high school. Junior year, I really blew up, honestly. But you know, up until that moment, it was you know I had no clue where I was going to be in two or three years. And 
uh, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible. And obviously I owe a lot of people credit for it, but just proud of always working hard. I mean, I, I don't think I yeah. took many off days these last four years and I wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm, I'm proud of how far I've grown and the work has been, it's made it what it is. It, it, you know, if you don't work for something, it's not as, as good at the end of the day. And I feel like I worked harder than anyone possibly could have, honestly. No question. You put yourself in the position to to succeed, bro. And and you didn't have an okay career. You had a great career. And, and it's funny because I remember when I was on staff and we were, you know, um, we had been working out or whatever. And your dad, he uh he comes, he's he comes up to me one time before practice. He's like, Well, what do you what do you think? Can he play at Syracuse? Can he play at Syracuse? I was like I was like, he's gonna, he's gonna keep, he got a chance. He'll keep getting better. You know, this was in the, in the beginning stages. And then just kind of, it's like you said, you guys were talking about it. And then to have that conversation and then to where we're talking about right now, I mean, you know, over 1700 points, second all time, made threes. That's, 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 it's a hell of an accomplishment, bro, to go from where you came to now. Like, not, it's, you know, I, like, I've seen it. Like, I, like you said, how, how hard you work. Like, I don't understand how people, if, if people really w get it, you know what I'm saying? Like the dedication and the hours. And then like, and another thing they don't understand is, is that pressure that you're talking about as far as like you being a man, having to carry that, that load and not only the load of, you know, having to be the man scoring the ball, but that load of having that name on your back, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Being a Bayheim and, you know, just having that, that, you know, when you hear Bayheim, that's Syracuse, you, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. uh, man, Bro, super proud of you. Just you, you had a hell of a career. What, what, yeah. what are you gonna miss about playing at Cuse? Uh, so much, man. Uh, I honestly think just the little things the most. Uh, I've been just thinking about the little things like traveling on road trips, going to places with the guys, um, practices, pre-practice workouts with GMAC every day for an hour. Yeah. Um, Lifting with Rye, seeing him in the weight room. Rye's my guy, one of the best. Been working out with him since seventh grade. So just, you know, the relationships I built, Brad Pike, obviously my guy Todd, uh, Schwirls, all those guys. You know, I'm going to miss the coaches, and just the people, really. The people have made it so special for me. And those are like my uncles. That's that's family for, for sure. Uh, you know, that's always will be family for me. So just playing, you know, nothing will mean more than playing at Syracuse for me because I was playing for my family, you know, with my family. Um, and I, it's all I've ever known was Syracuse basketball. So there's really nothing bigger than it. But obviously, I can't wait for the future. But I'm going to miss everything about playing here. It's been it's been unbelievable. And, and I don't think, you know, Hoopers know, but like, you know, those times like in between the workouts in between the reps when like when you get done workout and you just sitting on the side at the yeah. middle, those are the, the best that you're really going to miss. Like just, you know, chopping it up, just hoop talk or whatever it is like those, you know, especially, you know, when you go to the next level now, it's a business. So it's a little bit different guys, yeah. families, you know, this is kind of the camaraderie is different at this level. So I, I know for me personally, that's. I miss that, man. Like that, that's something that I, I yeah, really that's definitely priceless. Just talking to G for 30 minutes after a workout time about anything, really not even basketball stuff, just, you know, golf, whatever it is, his, his kids, just, uh, you know, it's, it's such family, you know, it's so close over the summer. We go to my house eight, nine times, uh, you know, during the summer for, if it's a recruit or just going for a dinner, hanging out with the guys there, there's nothing like that anywhere. I mean, college basketball is the best. Syracuse is the best because it's such a family atmosphere. Everyone gets along so well. So really those those little moments there, just talking to Red, talking to Griff, you know, whatever it is, uh, that those are the best. Put, talking talking with D-Nick, you know, messing with him, shooting with him after practice. They're playing ones. Uh, you know, you already know how it is. One of them. the most competitive dudes right there. They're crazy. It's crazy. I, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun having him this year, but we've had some good battles and he won't, we won't talk to each other for the rest of the day. If one of us lose or whatever, <laughs> that's how it goes. That's how he is for sure. He no definitely, that rubbed off on me this year. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That rubbed because D Nick was one of the, I'm talking about competitors. He was like, yeah, he was upset about it. If yeah, he, that's how bad he wanted to win. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So, bro, we talked about you, all your hard work. You put yourself, you gave yourself an opportunity to to play at the next level, to make to make a lot of money um, in the NBA. 
So let's let's talk about the NBA, the next level. How excited are you um, to get the opportunity to play there? And what what can you bring at that next level? What should teams expect from you? Yeah, I can't wait. Just the possibility of it. Again, you know, again, talking about it already these last couple of days, just the future, the process, uh, just just another thing I feel like I can prove more people wrong. And I mean, you know, I didn't think I get this far. Why not keep going and just take it to another level? Um, I think I've really proved myself as well. You know, obviously, I'm not going to take guys off the dribble, but I feel like I'm an elite shooter if I get get my looks. Um, you know, I wasn't shooting as efficient this year, but, you know, I maybe got didn't get many open looks, if any, uh, throughout the year. Uh, but I feel like in the NBA, just running off screens, being in the best condition I can just you know kind of like Duncan Robinson guys like that there are guys in the league that you know I feel like I can compare to and come in and and translate to maybe not to the level as them quite yet because they're you know Duncan Robinson's an extremely good shooter obviously starting on an NBA team I don't expect that right away I know I'm gonna have to work my way up but I'm gonna work that's the biggest thing is you know if you want me to work out at 5 a.m I'm gonna be there I'm gonna go until you want me till whenever uh I'm gonna be there every day ready to work that's you know, all I've ever known. So I have that training in me since seventh grade, working out with you every day, just getting up before school or after school, right off the bus, just getting a workout in, whatever it is I'm going to do. And I'm going to do, you know, everything I, I need to, everything I can to put me in the best position to play in the league and help a team out. But, you know, I know I'm just going to give everything I have. I'm not going to be worried about failing or anything because I already got to play at Syracuse. I mean, everything from here on out is is just an added bonus. So I'm going in there just, you know, ready to go, ready to work. And I'm just going to, you know, bring it bring it every day, really. And whatever happens, happens. But I'll be I'll be ready to work and going to, you know, make sure I try to make it work any way possible. Yeah, I'm excited to see that, bro. It's some some teams going to be lucky to have you, man. For real, it's appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to see that process, man. So finish this sentence for me. Syracuse University gave me go ahead. Syracuse University gave me everything I know, really. Uh it's everything. Uh it's been my life since I was five years old, watching basketball games, uh, watching on the DVD player, watching reruns of the national championship, wearing G Max jersey, Mellow's jersey, going to watch you play, going to the six overtime game, one of the greatest moments yeah. in my life, the one of my favorite memories to this day. Uh, the greatest basketball game I've ever watched and ever will watch. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, like everything. I can't even begin to say what you know it means to me. This will always be at the center of my heart. I'll be back every, next year, the year after. I'm going to come back to games, everything. And um can't even begin to describe how much Syracuse means to me. I, I always say it's the greatest place in the world. There's nowhere else I'd rather grow up and nowhere else I'd rather live. Absolutely. All right, bro. We're going to get you out of here with this last question. Give me your final four this year. Okay. And then who's going to win it? All right. Final four. I got Gonzaga, Arizona, Auburn, and Kentucky. And I got mm, my dad said Arizona. I don't want to follow his path. I'm going to go with Gonzaga. I think it's their year. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah, they gave me a they gave me an offer in high school too. So that'd be <laughs> they gotta get it. They gonna get by Duke because they got run into Duke. Duke's gonna be a good one. this year. Uh, yeah, they, they beat them earlier, but Duke's gotta beat Texas Tech first. That would be a good game. That's true. That's gonna be I I pick you know what I thought Duke was gonna get hot. I know they it ain't been playing like too good, but I just think they got they got the they pieces, can. Bro. the guards they gotta got, play good, bro. They got five, they got five pros on their team, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, bro, man, I appreciate you coming on, chopping it up. Congratulations on an unbelievable career. It was just a pleasure watching you grow, bro, and, and see the evolution of your game. And like I said, I'm just I'm excited to see, um, you know, this next step for you and, and, and where it takes you, man. Looking forward to that. Yeah, you already know, bro. I wouldn't, wouldn't be here without you. You already know that. Uh, so many hours in the gym together. But thanks for being someone I looked up to these last, you know, 10 years, really. So. You already know what it is, family for life. You already know, bro. It's all love. Appreciate you, yeah. man.